nuance to this is take these five different, most striking differences that you all voted on when you registered and have a debate on each one. And I want to stress that the purpose of these debates, it's not like a presidential debate where the goal is to try to humiliate the other side or get, it, the point is, or the point is rather simply to make sure all of us get to hear what the interesting arguments are for each position and see if we can get a more nuanced way of, of thinking about these things. And all of the five panels we're going to have now in rapid succession will not only debate those positions that were in the survey, but each panelist is going to propose a, little, a more nuanced position that they like, and then you will get to weigh in and say how enthusiastic you are on each one of those. So without further ado, we're going to go to the, the very uh, first panel, which will be chaired by Joy Ito from MIT, our director of the Media Lab. And we have Chehun Chihun Wang. Uh, how do I pronounce your name? Tiejun Huang. Tiejun Huang. And Tanya Singh, and, and John Havens, and Catherine Olson, and Joy Ito, who are going to debate, should we build super intelligence. So I want each of you to give a one or two minute, non-nuanced, very sort of specific view of why you chose yes or no. And then we're gonna do this for the polling, but I want to, you to either name or describe what your position is, because we're gonna then do a popularity contest later about, <laughs> Max said it wasn't a competition, but we'll see what the distribution of the <laughs> audience is and how compelling your vision is. But the vision, so the first part is do a non-nuanced pitch of your vision, and then the last half, we're gonna have a conversation uh, to then have the more nuanced conversation about the details. And so try to be as extreme as you can without being wrong. Um, and then after you guys each speak, I'll give a orthogonal but hopefully useful little comment and then we'll open it up to conversation. So that's, that's sort of the lay of the land. So I'll start out with you, Catherine. Cool, so of course the word should has a lot of meanings. When I answered this question initially, I tried to take a pretty pragmatic stance on it. Like if a friend came to me who I thought was like a capable friend who might actually do things in the world and said, my plan is to build a company, we're gonna start a company and we're going to build super intelligence. Should I do that? And say, ah, uh, no, like sounds like there's some other things you should consider in that. So that's sort of a sort of direct pragmatic should argument or should not argument. Um, the question is, should we build super intelligence? I'll highlight we already have systems that are super intelligent on specific tasks. We've already done that in certain domains. So maybe you interpret the question as, should we build fully autonomous agents that uh, exceed human capacity in pursuing their goals and are reasoning in sort of a long-term consequentialist way? I think sort of the whole point of this conference is that we all broadly agree that would go very badly by default. So no, we shouldn't do that. Uh, and then to sort of put the like punchy analogy on it when I was talking with some of these folks before, um, of course there would be a lot of benefits we could attain if we could do this right, whatever doing it right means. The analogy being, okay, the pool is really nice, I'd like to go swimming in the pool, uh, there's, I would have a lot of fun, but the pool is full of sharks, like it's full of sharks. Should I go swimming in the pool? The answer is no. <laughs> there's things we could do to mitigate those risks, but right now I think the risks so are too severe. it's called the pool of sharks. Pool scenario. of sharks. Okay, nice. okay. Nice. <laughs> All right, John. It's like a TV show. <laughs> um, so I'm John, and I, uh, I'll say this, uh, just speaking for me now, I triple E, or the Council on Extended Intelligence, the stuff I do. Uh, mine is also kind of a shark in the pool analogy, and it's somewhat nuanced in the sense that I don't think we should do anything, not just AGI, until we figure out the economic paradigmic level underpinnings of most of what we do as humans. And I was in Korea about a month ago at the OECD Wellbeing uh, uh, workshop, which is about 700 statisticians around the world focusing on things like the UN SDGs and how what we're actually measuring as a sense of what brings humans worth and prosperity since the 40s and 50s is largely about GDP. GDP is not evil. If you hear the term GDP and beyond, it means there are other measures that we can use to understand both human and environmental flourishing. So for me, uh, one thing to keep in mind if you study GDP, which is riveting, and fascinating, I'm kidding, uh, is it's really about productivity looking back on a year. 
and it's also about measuring things like exponential growth. Well, in terms of values alignment, when you have systems that are designed to be sometimes very fast and to do things at an exponential rate, and then you have a measure of success, a key performance indicator that for both policymakers and business, I used to be an EVP of a top 10 PR firm, and every quarter when the doors closed, you would want to bring value to your customers. You would want to do stuff that would help the world. But you also said these were the five words that dictated the actual actions you took. Did we make our numbers? So beyond GDP means people, planet, profit. If we can have triple bottom line economic metrics guiding what we make for AGI and ASI, I'm diving in the pool, sharks or no. Uh, without them, I don't think it makes sense to move forward without really thinking what is prosperity and flourishing mean for people in the environment and, and the entities that may come beyond if we don't deal with that now. But don't do it until we can measure it. Yeah, so GDP and beyond would be, I guess, the GDP and short, beyond. Okay. pithy, not as good as sharks in the pool thing. But, you know. All right. All right, Anya. Okay. Yes. So the spirit with which I've approached this question is that I feel the future is with super intelligence and it have a lot more positive value. So it seems that to me, it seems that insofar as we are not certain that the alignment problem is intractable or superintelligence would lead to some devastating outcomes, existential risk level catastrophe for human beings, it seems our job is to grind down the risk and bring it down to infinitesimally small, basically. And um, to say that we're not sure whether we can do that and there's risk, uh, hence we should stop progress towards superintelligence, arguably you can't even do that, but to say that to stop progress towards superintelligence to me seems like you're throwing the baby out with the bathwater and it's a really cool baby because it can help you know, uh, mitigate existential risk uh, or even catastrophic risks from other advancing technologies. So to me it seems like uh, it's, it's slightly premature to say that we shouldn't be progressing towards superintelligence. That's the spirit with which I've approached the question. I think you can also frame the problem in a way that uh, our current level of understand with our current level of understanding, we can say that superintelligence could, uh, there's a non-trivial chance that there'll be extremely bad outcomes from it, or that the technology gets concentrated in the hands of a few malicious actors, uh, or we get locked in a highly suboptimal uh, sort of condition with our axiological potential getting curtailed. So all of these are options on the table which we need to explore and make sure that we, we don't run too much of a risk of those things. Uh, we don't run a risk of those things. Um, but currently, I don't think we're in a position to make that call. And it seems a little premature to say that we should close off, uh, we should close off this path because, uh, you know, and, and not explore all, and not, not try and reap all the few positive uh, outcomes that could come out from this technology and build a defensively stable world, which AI would allow us to do. But don't throw out the baby. Don't throw out the baby. Okay. <laughs> Right. Oh. So I have two points. For uh, my position is uh, different with all of the, the three colleagues. That is, uh, absolutely, we should. Yes. So the point is that first, so the uh, involvement of the intelligence in the universe is a very long trip. So our human risk only one stage, one stop of the long trip. No reason to stop at our stage, and we prevent higher level intelligence, it's not really for me. It's a very natural uh, direction to be there for the uh, super intelligence. And maybe somebody say, we can involve ourselves. Maybe we can become smarter in the future. But for our human race, that means we need thousands of years, maybe longer because our uh, brain, our body involve too slow. And we have a limitation of our skull, for example. So it's impossible for our human being to become, to become the super intelligence compared with the machine-based super intelligence. So is the future, soon or later. So it will happen in some maybe some, some future. So in this case, no difference to build super intelligence, yes or no, because it will happen. Why we wait or delay the appearance of the super intelligence? So, so finally, we need face the, the appearance, the 
uh, super intelligence some, some, someday. So that's one, one reason. We, we must prepare for, the, for that. The second point is that even from the perspective of our human, human-centered or human uh, exper expersonalism, we still need to, to develop super intelligence because we have so many big challenges to face. Maybe for our human race, we cannot figure out that big challenges. We need the help of the super intelligence. For example, nuclear weapon is dangerous. Maybe destroy our Earth. We, we know that. But you can think about if another small planet hit our Earth some, someday, without the nuclear weapon, we may become the dinosaur. So with super intelligence means we can solve some big challenges that our human race cannot, cannot do. So we need to do that in the future and help us. For, for me, the super intelligence is not totally different intelligence compared with us. It's our copy, but with fast, maybe powerful intelligence. It's a copy. It's, for example, share the same neural network in our brain. So that means we can communicate with the super intelligence we built. It's not a alliance. So it's, a, it's our, could be become our partner and enhance our intelligence. So that's why uh, I support the idea. So the short version would be something like, shouldn't slow the inevitable? Slowly? We shouldn't slow the inevitable? How would you summarize in uh, something that goes on the screen? Or is it we're just a uh, blip, we don't matter? Or what's, what's that? It doesn't matter. We can think about how to. Uh, it's a three words. What would they be? Oh, three words. OK. Uh, three words, we, we should do that. We, we, should, we, we, we should do it. OK, just, we should just do it. OK, that's good. Um, so I will make my slightly orthogonal comment. Um, so some people mentioned it, but I, I think the should word is kind of weird because if you don't have the ability to stop it, there is no should. It's just it will happen. So, so my, if I'm allowed to add one, I would say it doesn't matter. It will happen. Um, but I will also just point out, um, I think David Kruger said it earlier when he was talking about the uh, comprehensive AI services. I'm very much in, his, in the camp of that conversation about AI actually being agency and models that are integrated into the system. We use the term extended intelligence. So if you think of corporations or society, instead of individuals. We already have super intelligence in a way that organizations are arguably more intelligent, at least more complex than individuals, and that if we start to augment society rather than thinking about augmenting individuals, it's already happening and it will probably happen anyway, and it's sort of an unstoppable thing. And so, so I would just have, have question with the, with the framing, but anyway, um, um, so, so my, my thing is that it will happen anyway and it's already here. Um, and so I, should we do the vote and then do, do the conversation? Can I just ask a nitpick yeah. about your fifth option? Yeah. How can you have both it already happened and it's inevitable? Well, so amplitude wise, <laughs> it'll just keep going. Okay. So I think, I think what happens is that we'll, we're just evolving on a trajectory with increasing power. And my, my view is that superintelligence is just intelligence increasing at the societal scale. And that, and, and my, my, my meta thing is that I think we just, AI just makes us more powerful and more complex, careening in the direction that we're going. So I'm more interested in getting our house in order and our trajectory headed the right way rather than figuring out whether we should stop it or not. That's sort of my, my nuance, which you will all get a chance to nuance away. Um, are the, are the unnuanced multiple choice? Ready? Yeah, so I want to just pose a particular framing of the question and I'm going to, uh, commit an error, which I apologize for, and which is like, raise your hand if which, which is posing a question which I haven't even spent five minutes thinking about, but I came up with it right before I got on the stage, which is, let's say that you are Demis, Shane, and Mustafa, and you're the heads of DeepMind, and one of your engineers comes to you and is like, we can do it, we can push the button, we can build AGI. And it's right now, like January 1st or whatever, January 4th, 2019, and you're trying to ask the question, okay, should we do this thing? How would you tell? What questions would you ask? What experts would you go to? Do you have enough information to make the judgment right now, today, if this were to actually happen, like, yes, we should? 
Uh, and I don't think that collectively we have the like decision making tools, epistemics, institutional, uh, institutional sanity, technical safety work done such that there's any person today that could make the yes we should decision like right now. That's just like a little more nuanced, but I would encourage folks to actually think like, what would it take for us to be in a world where a group of people is actually making the decision? There's this thing, build super intelligence. There's an action we can actually take, which is give the thumbs up. Should we do it? What would it take for there to be a valid like yes answer that we'd all feel good about? Yeah. I'm just posing a question that I think is like more meaningful than what was asked or something. <laughs> <laughs> or like maybe has some more yeah, so, so, nuance. So adding the time right now actually changes, it makes it more crisp, mind. right? But that, so I'm sort of saying imagine that this is happening right now, but then imagine like what properties does a world have in the future that's different than right now? I don't think anyone in this room, maybe I'm wrong, would claim that like there's a possible state where someone alive on Which earth could like, like confidently the press the go button and like be making the right call. But what would the world look like where that is true? Like what would those decision makers need to have access to that they don't have access to right now? Okay, yeah. can, I, can I keep you wanting or should we? Yeah, and, and do we have a mic for anybody? Uh, there's back there, I saw a hand. Yeah, hi, so I was gonna say something really naive or maybe very unimaginative, but I don't know how to think of a world where someone says, I'm about to do AGI, I can push this button and it will happen right now. I don't have it already, but you know, if I push this button, I will have it. Like, yeah. can you tell us a little bit more of what it would take to get to that stage? Yes, it's impossible to push a button and happen tomorrow, it's impossible. For me, uh, at least 30 years. So we have at least just, yeah. Let me try to clarify. Yeah. I didn't mean right now. I just yeah. mean, okay, 30 years from now, how would we get into a stage where someone was doing AI research, training their stuff, specifying some reward functions, playing around with things, and then all of a sudden, we're like, oh, we don't have AGI, but if I push this button, we will have AGI. What does push the button mean? Well, um, it could be release, how how do you code, not already right? have it at the point where you realize that if you push a button, you have it? I'll let you, okay. Max, pick any. Okay, maybe for uh, just one, one, one sentence. So, put part means at that time we have the technology okay. and the system. If we push the button, the AGI maybe have it. So that is the the, the time. So I think we're out of time, unfortunately. Yeah. So, Can I just add? Maybe push the button is like the last mile of things that need to be done. Developed, like, yeah. yeah. Just if you can reframe it like that, it, it doesn't necessarily need to be pushing a so specific it's a development button. button. Yeah. Okay, thanks panelists, thank you everyone. Cheers.